So guys, the insertion will happen at the front and deletion will happen at the rear according to the Q concept. To insert an element, so you have to use the function that is append. NQ in the sense you are inserting an element inside the Q. DQ in the sense you are deleting an element from the Q. If the end of the Q is pointing to the front of the Q, so that forms the circular Q. Hello everyone, I welcome all of you to the second session on data structure to stacks and queues. What is that I have discussed in the previous session? Guys, let's have a quick recap before I start the session. Suppose if you have not watched the previous session, I recommend all of you to go through that before you watch the session. Guys, please share the video and like the video if you love the content, right? So let me start the recap for all of you. What is that I have discussed in the previous session? So I spoke about the stacks. I spoke about the stacks where exactly we use the stacks. You know, that is what I will call it as a applications of stack. So, and also how exactly we perform the operations with respect to stacks. So what are the different operations that we perform? We perform push operation and then we perform pop operation. And also very important concept that we discussed in the previous session. So that is all about the converting, converting the expression, converting the given expression. So with the help of stack into the postfix expression. So that is one of the important topic that you have to remember. So about the previous session. So this is what I have discussed in the previous session for all of you, right? So hope you will understand the concepts, whatever I have discussed in the previous session. Keeping that in mind, let me start. What is that I'm going to discuss in today's session? So since I have already discussed about stack, so I will be discussing about queues in today's session, right? So I will be discussing the basic concepts of queues and also other terminologies that I will be dealing with queues is what I'm going to discuss. Along with that, implementing the queue in Python is what I'm going to discuss. Guys, after that, the variations in the queues, that is different types of queues, what we have is what I'm going to discuss for all of you, right? So along with that, the last topic in this slide, that is applications of queues, where exactly I can use queues is what I'm going to discuss for all of you, right? Without wasting much of your time, let me get into the session. Guys, what is queues is all about? Right, let me just take an example before I get into the statements. Let me just take all of you to the uh, flick. I mean like a you know, movie for a movie. So it's a day out for all of us. It's a movie day, let us imagine like that. I'm going to treat for all of you. What will happen? Imagine we don't have book my show, right? We have to go to the uh, theater and we have to stand in the queue. We have to stand in the queue to buy the tickets. So they'll just say that one person can take one ticket at a time. So what we will do, so we will stand in the queue, everybody. So please understand, this is the ticket counter, okay? This is a ticket counter. Everybody is standing in a queue, okay? So imagine this is a queue. So you guys will enter this queue from this side, everybody. So you will start standing from here, right? So everybody will start moving from this side. So we, we are moving from this side, right? So they will go to the counter, they will take the ticket and they will come out of the queue from this side. So please observe, this is what I will call it as a rare end. This is what I will call it as rear end. And this is what I will call it as front end. What is that I will call? So this is what I will call it as rear end. This is what I will call it as front end. So why are you saying this up? Just imagine the insertion will happen at the rear end. Insertion will happen at the rear end, but deletion will happen at the front end. Deletion will happen at the front end. So that's how we perform the operation in queue. So what is the principle then? So in stack, first in, last out, but what happens in the queue? So first in, first out. This is what you have to remember when it comes to the concept of stack. What is that? First in, first out. So those who will get into the queue first, so he will get out of the queue first, is what you have to remember when it comes to the concept of queue. 
This is the basic concept that all of you should know, right? So, Q is simply means that an element that is inserted at the beginning place will be deleted first is what the first point explains. That is what I have explained, guys, right? To manage a Q, all the insertion and deletion takes place from two different positions. So, that is what we will call it as front and rear. So, guys, the insertion will happen at the front and deletion will happen at the rear according to the Q concept, the normal Q concept. But when it comes to the different types of Qs, the operation differs, which I will be explaining in the coming concepts, right? The operations of adding and removing the items called NQ and DQ. What is that? So, guys, you have to understand you will be performing NQ and you will be performing DQ operations when you are performing the insertion and deletion of the element inside the queue. So what is that? So guys, if you are inserting an element into the queue, so you will be calling that operation as NQ. Suppose if you are deleting an element from the queue, you will be calling that operation as DQ is what you have to remember. So fine, we understood NQ and DQ. So if you compare this NQ and DQ to the stack, what do you call it as? Push and pop, right? The same thing, I will not call it as push and pop when it comes to the Q concept, that is NQ and DQ is what I will call it, right? NQ in the sense you are inserting an element inside the Q, DQ in the sense you are deleting an element from the Q is what you have to remember, right? So moving on to the next content, what I have. So guys, rules followed by the Q, what is the first rule that I have? The data can only be removed from the front end of the queue, the removal of element is called, we call it as DQ operation. We call it as DQ operation. So guys, so what are the next one I have? So the new data element can be added to the rear end of the queue. The insertion of the element is what we call it as a NQ operation. So guys, they are speaking about the NQ and DQ. So that nothing much, which I have already discussed about the NQ and DQ. So what is the next thing that I have? I have same operations. So we have peak, overflow, underflow. This we have already discussed in the previous session. So what is that? What is the meaning of peak operation? Please understand, it refers to inspecting the value at the queue's front without removing it. What exactly it means? Sir? I have the queue, but what exactly I have in the front of the queue, what is the data item that I have in the front of the queue is what I will be able to inspect. Inspect, why are you using that word? Inspect. Inspect in the sense you are coming to know what exactly the element that you have inside or in the first place of the queue without removing anything, without removing any data. So you will just tell me what exactly that you have in the front of the queue. So that is what, that operation is what I will call it as peak. What is this overflow? You have the elements in the queue. You don't have the space in the queue. If you want to insert any element, so there is no space completely. The queue is occupied with the data items. Such situation is what I will call it as overflow. Such situation is what I will call it as overflow. What is underflow? You have the empty queue, but still you want to perform, you want to perform the delete operation. So that situation is what we call it as underflow. There is no element to delete inside the queue. So guys, such situation is what I will call it as underflow. That is what you need to understand with respect to this. Moving on to the next one, implementation of Q in Python. So guys, we can use Q and friend. What exactly this is all about? I want to speak about peak. Let us understand this in detail. So where Q is a list, what is the meaning of it? I am using the list data type to implement the concept of Q. So how do you implement the Q? If you ask me Q exists in the Python, sir, of course, we have some of the predefined functions, but if you want to manually code for the Q data structure, we will be preferring all of you to use the data type that is list. So fine, using this data type that is list, you will be preparing the queue, you will be forming the queue. 
So the front is an integer storing the position of the first value in the queue. What is that? Front is an integer. Front is an integer storing the position of the first value. So this is an integer value. It stores the position of the first value that I have in the queue. So this is an index you can imagine. Okay. So this is an index which stores the index of the first element that I have in the queue. So this will give me the position of the first element that I have in the queue. If I get the index, obviously I can access what is the first element that I have in the queue. So this is all about peak, the implementation of peak in Python, right? Moving on to the next one, push. So guys, push in the sense what? You are performing NQ operation. Right? So how do I insert an element into the queue? So please observe. So I'm using queue. Queue is the list name that I'm using dot append. Append, same thing, same function to insert an element, to insert an element. So you have to use the function that is append. So that's what you have to remember. Whichever the element that you want to add, so you will be passing that as a parameter. So that is what they have mentioned it as item is what you need to understand right so guys uh, moving on to the next one so we have pop so pop is a function that i have for list so since i'm using i'm using this list to form the concept of queue so i will be using this pop operation to remove the element to remove the element so please understand it removes the last value from the queue and returns it right so guys this is how my operations that i can perform on queue but you need to understand one statement pop operation is removing the last element is removing the last element but you should remove the first element why why guess using these two methods you should be able to modify or you should be able to write the program so which will perform this operation insertions should happen at this end deletion should happen at this this end insertion should happen at this end deletion should happen at this end so this is rear end this is front end keep one thing in mind whatever you have inserted first so that element you should start removing it so you have to write a code with the help of pop operation so which will delete the first element instead of deleting the last element that is the concept that you have to remember only then you will be able to successfully implement the concept of queue right by saying this moving on to the next one variations in queue i have the next type of queue so that is what i will call it as circular queue what is the next type of queue that i have i have circular queue what is the meaning of circular queue? If I am able to represent my queue in the form of a circle, what is the meaning of circle? If the end of the queue is pointing to the front of the queue, so that forms the circular queue. So you can observe here, so whatever the queue that I have, it's in the circular form. The end of the queue is pointing to the front of the queue. Suppose if it forms like that, so that forms the circular queue. You will be able to observe the free space of the queue in the circular queue. All the free space will be accumulated in one particular region. So that is the speciality of circular queue, right? So guys, again, you will have two pointer. One is rare, another one is front. One is rare, another one is front is what you need to observe. Circular queues are the queues implemented in circular form rather than a straight line. In the previous example, so we used to represent the straight line to represent the queue, but when it comes to the circular queue, so we used to represent the circular queue in the circular form, right? So in the linear type of queues, guys, queues after some insertion and the deletion, some unutilized space lies in the beginning of the queue, in the beginning of the queue. Circular queues are used to overcome the problems of unutilized space in the fixed linear queues. That is the advantage that I have. I have already spoken about it. So whatever the space you have, so it will be in one particular region. So 
it can be utilized properly. That was the drawback that we had it in the linear queues, right? So guys, this is an advantage if you use the circular queue. That is the main advantage that we have, right? So moving on to the next one that we have, right? We have the variations of queues. What exactly the variations of queues is all about? Can you guess guys? So we have something called DQ. So in this DQ, we can perform NQ operations and DQ operations at the both the end is what you have to remember. What exactly it means are you can perform the insertion and deletion at the both the end is what I meant in the last statement. What is the meaning of it? Please observe in the previous slide I have explained you clearly that you can insert at the rear end but you can delete at the front end. You cannot perform these operations like for example, you cannot delete from the rear end and you cannot insert at the front end in the previous example. But in this queue, it is not like that. You can perform the insertion and the deletion at the both the end. So that is the speciality of this queue, right? So, but there is a trick, there is a condition for all of you. So what is that? Let's have a quick look at that. So input restricted. So what is the meaning of input restricted? An input restricted DQ is a DQ which allows the insertion at the only one end. So guys, please understand input restricted DQ, input restricted DQ in the sense it is a DQ which allows the insertion at only one end but deletion at the both the ends. Input restricted in the sense only one side the input is allowed but deletion is allowed in the both the ends. The opposite to this is the next point, an output restricted DQ in the sense, only one side the output is allowed. Deletion will happen only at the one end, but insertion can happen at the both the ends is what the next type that is output restricted. If the output is restricted, only one end you can perform the output operation. If the input is re restricted, only one end you can perform the input. So both the ends you can perform the deletion. So guys, this is the variation of the queues that you have. What is the next one that I have? Queues application. I don't have to explain this to all of you because nowadays we are falling in queue for many things. It can be uh, telephone calls for the customer care and also it can be for sharing of resource among multiple users. And also we have airport authority make use of queues in situations of sharing a single runway, right? So all these things and also CPU uses the queues implement round robin scheduling algorithm. So guys, if you want to have the resource, if your process wants to access a particular resource, so if the process is already consumed by another process under execution, so all other process wants to access that resource should be in queue. So I don't have to explain much about the queue. All of you know about the queue, right? It's the same way you have the queue for a movie theater. So you have the queue for airport. You have the queue for checkup. And you have the queue nowadays for COVID test. So a lot of queues are there. So there exactly we use the concept of queue. That is the applications of queue. You can write on your own. So you can take up some general examples to explain the applications of queues by saying this. I have come to an end of this chapter. So guys, hope I have tried my best to give you the best knowledge on stacks and queues. So the practical programs, whatever you have with respect to stacks and queues, which I will be discussing in, in detail in the lab programs. Till then, take care of your health and your family. So take care of yourself. Thank you very much. Share this video, like this video. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.